Hey guys, this is BasePay86. I thought I wanted to make a little video on why I do not believe in an eternal universe, and I basically wrote a blog here and I typed it out and printed it out. I wrote this blog like a while back, at like on, on Christmas Eve at like two in the clock in the morning, and I don't even know why I decided to write this. But this is a, basically an argument that um, a lot of theologists like to use to support the existence of God, and so I would like to basically read it for you. So here it is. Lately, I've been hearing a lot of people, usually those who support or think like the rather close-minded rational response squad, uh, claim that the universe is infinite or eternally existing. I am greatly surprised by this because this viewpoint was more common back around back in around the 1970s. As science progressed, more and more evidence was shown to support that the universe had a beginning, and less and less people bought into this outlandish view. It has only been recently that people such as many of the new hostile atheists and several other groups of skeptics began buying into this assumption all over again. I think that there are two reasons for this. One reason is that more of these individuals have reached a point where they will not tolerate a religion of any kind and, and are too angry to take a critical analysis of their own claims. And number two, they favor the first law of thermodynamics to discredit religious claims altogether. Here I will give an increase, the increasingly common objections given by these individuals and in as gently a manner as possible show the flawed logic and lack of evidence these individuals present for their claims. Objection number one. The first law of thermodynamics says that matter and energy can neither be created nor destroyed, therefore the universe was never created. I'd like to point out that this is actually circular reasoning. How you ask? Basically the skeptic is using the scientific principle to prove itself to be correct thereby supporting the claim that the universe is eternal. But this begs the question. It assumes that matter and energy can neither be created nor destroyed by any means, whether it be natural or supernatural. How can this be when science, by definition, can make absolutely no comment about supernatural occurrences, assuming that the universe's creation was supernatural? So the problem here is, is that the skeptic is deliber deliberately redefining how science is supposed to operate to discredit any claims that contradict his or her own. This is a rather dishonest tactic that I see a lot of atheists do. Secondly, the leading experts on cosmology have shifted their views after seeing the evidence for a finite universe. Therefore, if the universe had a beginning, then the skeptic has no choice but to accept that the first law is refer is referring only to natural causes, not both natural and supernatural. Other, oftentimes at this point, skeptics will resort to making other claims like red herrings without even conceding to their flawed logic. Objection number two. This universe is just one of many universes. Study quantum mechanics and you'll understand. I find that this is somewhat funny that people claim this when they have no evidence to support it. They don't uh, present any evidence. Even if one does study quantum mechanics, the above assertion is left unsupported. This is because quantum mechanics only allows the possibility for the existence of multiple universes and does not predict their existence whatsoever. Besides, the multiple universe theory, which is an oxymoron, is also a cop-out and does not discredit the proposal of the causation of this universe because one of the other universes that could have existed before this one could have caused this one into existence. Objection number three. The universe is uncaused, but that doesn't mean that nothing caused it. This is an argument that an atheist presented to me earlier here on YouTube. But this is clearly a contradiction. If the universe was caused by nothing, then logically it is uncaused. This is because both terms nothing and uncaused imply the exact same connotation. The term uncaused negates the act of causation, and the term nothing negates the cause itself. If the skeptic were to argue that the universe couldn't have been created by nothing because if it did, then it did have a cause, then he or she has just negated his or her own argument. By negating the causation of the universe, the skeptic argues that it did not have a cause. However, by negating that the universe was caused by nothing, it automatically assumes the opposite, that it was created by something. Therefore, the skeptic is in a self-defeating position either way because he is denying all possible options. Therefore, the only option is that the skeptic must admit that the universe was caused by something. And those are all the basic objections that I've heard. Um, but here's some more side notes that I put down. One of the most obvious reasons as to why the universe could not be eternal is the logical problem with infinite time. 
If the universe is eternal, then logically time is eternal as well. This further assumes that, uh, that there was an infinite number of events that occurred before and after the present. However, the problem is if, that, if there is an infinite number of events that occurred before the present, then logically you will never reach the present. Let me give you an example. Let's say I have an infinite number of dominoes, and out of those dominoes I label one of them X. I have an infinite endless or endless number of dominoes before X and infinite numbers of dominoes after X. If I were to have an endless number of dominoes fall before X, then logically X will never fall over because the uh, number of dominoes before it is endless by definition. And if that endless number of dominoes reached X, then logically it would no longer be endless. Now apply the same logic to the reality of time and you'll realize that the eternal time proposition is impossible in actuality. There is no sufficient reason to claim or even think that the universe is eternal. Furthermore, the scientific evidence we have to support a cause, a cause universe tells us that time, space, and matter all began to exist simultaneously. Therefore, if the universe were caused, then logically no other universe could exist prior to such an event. And if you, um, so with all due respect for the skeptics who claim that the universe is eternal, they really have nothing to offer or for supporting their claims about an, infinite, about an infinite or eternally lasting universe. If you want to look up some uh, specific evidences for the cause universe, look up William Lane Craig or Paul Davies, and they're great um, leading proponents on the causation of the universe. So that's my basic blog. Um, one of my best friends had had uh, one of her friends uh, read my blog and he actually believes that the universe is eternal and he was really kind and said it was a well thought out um, well thought out um, blog and but he didn't really refute my claims all he had to say was this brace yourself for this you'll be surprised by this he said the reason why I believe that there is an infinite amount of time uh, before and after the present is because I believe that time does not exist now think about that for a second. What he is denying is denying the existence of a certain subject. And in order to deny that subject, you also have to deny its attributes, um, it, it being eternal or being finite or being infinite. But if time does not exist, how can it be infinite or finite? So what he's really doing is that he's denying a certain subject while at the same time granting that non-existent subject attributes. So he's basically saying time does not exist, but at the same time it's infinite. And that's certainly arguing in a circle, and it's not, and it's, it's actually a contradiction, not arguing in a circle. But basically that's my argument, and to all skeptics, no disrespect. I completely respect the fact that you believe in it, but it's not a good belief to hold. Uh, seriously, it's not a good argument to claim that the universe is eternal. So that's my basic video. So if you guys want, please comment and subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. So you guys take care, and I hope to see you next time. So take care. This is Base P86.